help me, Kristen. That is uh, the name of lots of emails that I get, but one of them I get very frequently is for uh, different setups on different looms for the Loom Knit Chevron blanket or the Ripple and Ridge blanket that was converted from needles onto the knitting loom. And this is what it looks like here. This is a sample of the Lovey that I had shown and made. And we originally did it on the Nifty Knitter loom and I had different pegs, these blue and orange or pink colored um, little stitch markers that were on this particular loom. But this one is only 48 pegs and I told everyone this is a lovey sample and if you want to do a bigger one and it's 5 8 gauge then you need 139 pegs. Well people want to make it with different um, weights of yarn. This is a number six weight yarn but if maybe you want to make it with the five or a four. Maybe you want to make it on the S loom and you were like, I don't know how to set up my loom. So today I'm going to show you how to do it on different looms. We're actually going to go over multiple looms and uh, all kinds of information and the easiest way to set up for any kind of loom. All right, so stick with me and we'll do that right now. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. The first thing you're going to need to do this is to get some poly bands or rubber bands or hair bands, whatever you want to call them. I just got this pack that's multicolored. I got it at Walgreens. Um, this is from Scoonsy. It doesn't really matter, the manufacturer. I've got multiple colors in there and I actually bought two packs to show you multiple looms on here. So you might need one or two packs. It just depends on how big of a um, loom that you're going to use. I separated out contrasting colors and I have blues and oranges because I thought that they were um, easy to see on the loom. I also picked out two green ones and that's going to show the uh, beginning and the end of my uh, my blanket. So I want to be able to uh, know exactly where I start and stop. So that's the basics that you need as far as supplies go besides your loom and your yarn. So whether you pick your project by the yarn size or the loom size, it doesn't matter. Um, you can pick the yarn and then determine, okay, I want, um, I'm wearing, you can see a four weight yarn, so I'm gonna use a small gauge loom, and now I'm gonna find the one that has the most pegs, or you could say, what is the loom that has the most pegs, and then what kind of yarn can I use on it, and what size do I think I might get out of that? So it just depends. You might just go to your stash of looms and say, which one do I have the most pegs on? And I'm just gonna go from there. So no matter which loom you have or which decision you make, whether it's based on yarn or loom, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna go into show you exactly how to um, set your loom up. I'm just gonna name off a few of them that are on my display right here. This one is a Afghan loom from KB Looms. Uh, this one I can cast on 191 pegs. This one from uh, Cindy Wood Looms, and I can cast on 243 pegs. The all-in-one loom with the five peg extenders, I can cast on 100 pegs. If I add on the 20 pegs, like I've got here, I can cast on 126 pegs. If I do the 28 inch with the peg extenders, I can cast on 165. And if I jump up to the 38 inch and then purchase the 20 peg extenders, I can do 204 pegs casted on. So that works really well. Uh, and then if you look at the Afghan loom, I can cast on 191. So as far as gauge goes, the same gauge in this one is the same as the 38 with a 20 peg extender and I can get the most on here, but it's more compact to use this one, say in your lap. The 38 inch is really, really long and you definitely don't wanna travel with that. As far as all the other looms go, there is a big variety of Cindy Wood looms and they can uh, accommodate you in even custom sizes and also check out Kiss looms as well for more variety. Okay, this is what these stitch markers represent. You are looking at uh, blue stitches, which are uh, represent knit stitches, and then you've got two of them next to each other, which are actually two knit togethers, or knit two togethers, and then you have another knit that's in the center here, and on either side where you see the orange, it's actually that large yarn over it right there. Now, the green is actually going to be stretched over four stitches here, and that just marks the 
first four in garter stitch and then the last four of garter stitch here. So if I uh, want to make a repeat on here, what happens is I have a knit stitch here. So I have these representing four. I have a knit stitch here, a yarn over, and then I actually have four knit stitches here and two stitches in the middle, which are knit two together. And then I have four knit stitches in the middle. And then I have a set of three stitches here. So it's actually a yarn over, knit, yarn over. And then to repeat that sequence, it's actually between this point here and this point here. And then you just keep repeating that over and over. So if I wanna do a nice swatch, I would wanna do one repeat, two repeat. So at least two repeats wide. Three would be really desirable, but at least two. And then you can have something to um, measure and figure out uh, how many stitches uh, to get the blanket size you want on the right size yarn with that particular loom. Anyway, so if I was to repeat this just for two, then I would just need uh, these next two here. And then I need to end it, right? So I'm gonna have one more yarn over and knit stitch and then I'll end it with the four at the end here. So uh, I would cast on 35 stitches and have seven of the blue and four of the orange and then whatever you want to mark your um, garter stitch uh, ends with. And that's how, just imagine that this has one less repeat here and then this is right here and that's how it'd have a nice little swatch with two pattern repeats. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this on a loom. So you can see on this loom here, I've got uh, the beginning that is marked with, uh, let's point with the dark, something darker here, this little uh, triangle here. This is from KB Looms. This is their Afghan loom. It doesn't say S loom, but it's an S loom. You can see the shape here. And it starts on this side and works its way around. And so we start with the first four and then we put a blue. And then we have our yarn over, then we skip four have the two blue, skip four, and then have the three with the blue in the middle, and then so on, okay, and it keeps repeating. However, the easiest way to show you how to do it is uh, to say, lay the um, your stitch marker for the first four, so you're gonna mark with the green the first four stitches, then the fifth stitch in, you'll mark the blue. Then you go to your chart, which I will have all of this information in the description or at the link uh, on our blog, and show you how many stitches you're gonna cast on, and you're gonna find the most that you can cast on to your loom, and you'll go to that number. So on this loom, it's 191. So I'm gonna go to the 191st peg, which is actually this one. Uh, so when you count this direction and go all the way around in one S and then weave your way back, around this side, it ends right here. And so I put my um, four stitches here, okay? So five from the end of the ending and five from uh, the beginning are going to be a blue, um, a, a blue marker. And then I've doubled them over. Okay, once I have those, uh, I can go ahead and put my one yarn over marked here, okay? Then you don't have to worry about the beginning and end. Then you're going to put, um, uh, get all your blues ready. Okay, so after this blue, we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, and then lay two blue. Then count one, two, three, four, five, and then lay one blue. Then count one, two, three, four, five, lay two blue. One, two, three, four, five, lay one blue. One, two, three, four, five, lay two blue, and you get the rhythm of it, right? Once you lay all of your blue and you know that you've got it right, and you can even double check, I've got five in between whenever I have blues. It's the in-between number. Then you can go and grab your, um, your orange ones, and when you see a single, then just lay it right on top, okay, so of either side of the single. So every time I have a single, you can see two of them, okay? There are no orange ones when I have double blues. You see that? Okay, so what I did is, uh, and that would solves the whole loom, right? Let me show you my other loom, and it actually goes from the other direction. So my Cindy Wood loom starts on the, um, another side. There, It's actually handed different. Let me grab that. 
this is the Cindy Wood loom, and this is the Universal S loom. And they've got their starter peg over on this side, and you'll be working your way in this direction. Uh, you can work uh, this direction or um, start working this direction. It doesn't matter, but um, the same as the other loom, uh, you want to start putting the first uh, four pegs. You're going to mark by putting a one uh, band over those four, just like that. And then you lay your first blue peg on the fifth one. And then you count uh, your peg from my little cheat sheet I'll give you. Uh, you count your loom and find out how many pegs that you need for a particular loom. This one I, I am working with um, 243 pegs cast on, which will give me 18 repeats. And I need um, 55 of these blue and I need uh, 36 of the orange. So uh, I go ahead and count to 243, lay my uh, rubber band for the last five stitches, or last four stitches, and then I go ahead and place on loosely my blue, like this. So you can see that most of them I have nice and loose, and then some of them I've already tightened. That's because I go ahead and lay these on um, just easily, and make sure that I know that they're in the right spot and then I can come back and move and adjust them down if I didn't do it right. But once I have them in the right spot, uh, the way I um, get them to attach better is I just pull on them and uh, double them over like that and then push it down. So pull on it with my loom pick and twist it, flip it, and then push it down. So they're doubled over and they're not going anywhere. So that's it. So once you've got that fifth one on there, you can go ahead and put the band right next to it for the yarn over um, at the ends here. And then you're going to count, um, just ignore the orange ones, and you're going to count in between. So one, two, three, four, five. Put on two blue. One, two, three, four, five. Put on one blue. One, two, three, four, five. Two blue. And you can see how this is where my loose ones are. And I'll come back to that. One, two, three, four, five. Single blue. And then once you've done all of it, double check your numbers and then lay down all your double oranges here. Okay, so that's that particular loom. There's also a pink uh, infinity loom that's kind of longer. It's from Knit UK. And that one has actually the most pegs. That was 295 uh, pegs and that's 22 uh, stitch pattern repeats and you're going to need 67 blue um, uh, blue markers and 44 of the orange so that's how you would do that one the same exact way I'm going to show you laying them on there to place your stitch markers you're going to use your cheat sheet and see how many stitches you need for a cast on i've gone ahead and counted off 35 stitches and just marked my very last stitch for 35 and this is what i'm going to use for two pattern repeats to make a swatch and i would recommend doing that on every single loom and whatever yarn you're using and make at least a six inch swatch and then bind off you can measure the gauge and weigh it and then you can actually use our calculator to find out how many yards you need also how many stitches you'll need to cast on for uh, your um, for your blanket to get the right size so there's all kinds of goodies down below all right this is the way that you're going to set it up you're going to take your green stitch marker or whatever color you have to mark off the first four pegs so place that on there the first four pegs and then go to the last four pegs Okay, and you can take off this last one if you need to. Uh, I'm going to leave it there for now in case we miscounted, right? All right, so we want to place our first blue stitch marker on the fifth peg in, okay? And then the fifth peg in from the ending will place one blue, okay? So if yours is a larger one, you're just going to have to move to the end, make sure you've counted, and then count five in. Okay, I'm just doing this on the small scale so you can see it clearly in the video. Okay, so then I want you to go ahead and put the uh, yarn over marker, which is the orange for me, um, on the sixth peg in from both sides, so from the beginning and from the end. Okay, and the reason why I'm having you do this is because this is the only time there's a single orange one by itself. The rest of the middle will have two of them together. Okay, so after we place those, 
Now we're gonna ignore this orange one and we're gonna count right after the blue, five. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Next to that, we're gonna put a blue and then next to the blue, we're gonna put another blue. So we're gonna have double blue, all right? After the blue, we're gonna count five. One, two, three, four, five, and place a single blue. Then we're gonna count five. One, two, three, four, five, and place double blue. One, two. And then we count one, two, three, four, five, and we've got our blue again, okay? So you're actually at the end now for this pattern repeat. But if you have a larger loom, you will um, continue going until you get to the end. You just keep repeating. So I'll have this little cheat sheet and information um, for you in the description and at the blog. Okay, so these last orange ones, these will just go on either side of wherever you have the blue so the single blue is where they're put. Okay, so now you can see these are all loose. They're um, easily, um, they easily come off. They don't, um, they don't stay very well unless you double them over. So if I just take my yarn tool and flip them over and push down, then I have a um, stitch marker that stays really well. So once I'm sure that everything is um, moved in the right place, then that's when I start doubling them over and making sure they stay. If I do that before, I'm sure, then it's just a waste of time, so I don't like to do that. But be sure and um, do this before you start casting on, otherwise you're gonna have stitch markers everywhere and you'll have to do it all over again. So once you get uh, that all done, you are ready to cast on. And um, you'll wanna go visit the video on um, which direction to start. If you uh, want to work uh, right-handed, you're going to make sure that your um, <clears throat> your row one uh, begins on the left and works this way, and uh, that way when you do your return row, all of your purl stitches are going in this direction. You only do the purls on the garter stitches, and of course all the middle ones are unit wrapped. And you want to make sure it's nice and loose on your return row. So uh, uh, row two, all the row twos are going to be nice and loose. If you are left-handed, you're gonna to wanna to do it the opposite direction. And it's great because it's mirrored. Okay, and that's all you need to know. All right, so this is just a quick rundown again of what you do to set up. You're marking the first four and the last four for garter stitch. Then mark the fifth peg in blue, skip five, mark two in blue, skip five, mark one in blue, and repeating, skipping five, marking two, skipping five, marking one, until you only have four pegs left and then you're going to um, next mark the sixth peg in orange uh, from uh, each end in orange and mark two pegs on each side of the single blue with orange. So um, that will actually get you exactly how I did it over here. It's just a different way of saying it. Okay, here's the little key. So you've got your garter, then you've got your blue orange skipping four in the middle it's because of that orange we ignored. And then you've got your two blue together, you got four blank, then you've got your orange, blue, orange, and then um, this part is what's repeated. So all those four blank, and then the two blue, and then the orange, blue, orange, that section gets repeated over and over and over until you only have uh, six at the end, and then you've got orange, blue, and then you've got the last four for garter. And that's really it. So I'm just gonna go over a few of these here and the rest of them will be online. Um, the cast on of 35 is a swatch size and that's two pattern repeats. There's seven needed of blue stitch markers and four of orange. If you want to use the all-in-one with five uh, pegs, so this all-in-one but the five peg sliders, then you can cast on at the max of 100 uh, pegs, which is seven pattern repeats. That's 22 blue and 14 orange. If you want the all-in-one like this one here, you can have nine pattern repeats, which is 126 stitches to cast on. You need 28 blue and 18 orange. For um, the 139 that I talked about in the video, there is a, uh, I believe a Cindy Wood loom one that'll do it in five eighths that you can get. And that is uh, 31 uh, blue stitch markers and 20 
orange, and that's a large gauge loom. Then um, if you wanna do the 28 inch loom with 20 peg extenders, that's 165 to cast on. There's 36 blue stitch markers needed and 24 orange. If you wanna do the uh, Afghan loom, the um, the big uh, white one, S-shaped from KB Looms, that's 191 cast on. You get 14 repeats. That's 43 blue and 28 orange. The largest one from uh, Knitting Board would be the 38 uh, length loom, 38 inch plus. You need to buy the extra 20 peg extenders and that's 204 stitches to cast on and that's 46 blue and 30 orange. And then the uh, Universal S Loom from uh, Cindy Wood Loom is 243 uh, stitches to cast on. That's 55 blue and 36 orange. And on this one, there is um, 100, there's a 248 and a 255 uh, S-shape loom, but both of them um, will have to be done with 243 pegs cast on because the next size up is 256, so there's not enough pegs. Then I um, jump all the way down to the end. This is the Knit UK Infinity S loom. I believe it's a 3 8 inch loom, so it's a small gauge. And that's 295 stitches for 22 pattern repeats, 67 blue, 44 orange. And I believe that gets you everything that you need to know. If you are using the half inch, um, 43 peg, half inch one from Cindy Wood, you should get about 4.25 stitches per inch and that should get you about 57 inches wide. I think that's a really good size blanket. And then this little cheat sheet of mine here is just saying, um, I had on my original one, uh, this one here, I had thir three and a half stitches per inch on the large gauge five eighths inch loom. And um, yeah, so that's how I did that with the 48 pegs for Lovey and 139 pegs to make the blanket. I hope you found that video helpful. If you'd like to help more people, please be sure and comment down below and let us know what loom you used, what yarn you used, and uh, maybe what size that you got. If you could um, actually measure out uh, how many stitches per inch that you got, uh, that would be super helpful to future generations of people. I don't know how long this video will last, but it'll help the next person and maybe yourself for reference. So um, be sure and leave that in the comments on the blog or on the video or both if you want to. I hope you have a great day and happy loom knitting and knitting and crochet. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.